Saiyan Survive here, bringing you another Dragon Ball Super manga video today. And usually, um, a week or so before the release of a new chapter, we usually get a panel preview of this month's chapter. But not this month. We are actually getting a special interview with Toru Taro himself from obviously being interviewed by Rick Tiochita. And but first, before I continue. If you haven't already, hit the like button for this video, subscribe if you haven't already, hit the notification bell when I upload new videos like this, talking about of course Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Super the manga, and Dragon Ball Super Superhero, which hopefully we get some news coming out this month from V-Jump once that does come out, but we are over a week away, so let's get down to this and let's talk about this interview. So. Obviously, you can see right there, Victor Chia with Toy Taro. I just find it funny that they cover his face, even though we do know what he looks like, but I guess for privacy purposes, they do that. But, um, oh, also, he's wearing a mask, so that's pretty cool. So, obviously, this is from the official Dragon Ball website. I do really do like they incorporate a lot of this stuff now for us to see, so it's really cool. Um, as it says right there, Weekly Dragon Ball News is, is a video series updated every Monday, and it's talking about celebration of Volume 16 of Dragon Ball Super manga series. The manga's editor, Vicky Yoshida, sits down with Toy Taro as they discuss the epic Granola the Survivor arc, and the, which is featured in this newest volume. So the story's origins, the inner work, and the design process, and the ongoing behind the scenes will be revealed in this video. And since we're not gonna watch this whole video, I didn't watch all of all of it. And very interesting. I was thinking about like maybe like doing a reaction to it, but luckily Herms has got us covered with that. So let's check out his Twitter right now for that. So as it says right there, the DB official site has a new Toy Taro video interview up explaining the creation of Granola Arc. Granola himself was a Toy Taro's idea, while Toriyama added the heaters and the Namekian and new Dragon Ball stuff. So most okay, so most of the lore stuff was done by Toriyama himself, so that's pretty cool to see. So he still obviously has like the final say of everything. So right here, um also um Oatmeal is officially Granola's goggles. It wasn't established already. It seems he'll play a big role in, in this most storyline. Or this um, arc storyline. So, like you see right there, I mean, I really didn't expect the goggle to talk as he was designing the goggles for Granola. Yeah, he's a lone warrior, he's, so he essentially doesn't talk. But Toriyama used to say that if, there's, if there aren't two characters moving together, we never know what they're thinking. So, that is actually true. We could have some. Inner dialogue, but we don't know. We don't know how that's actually going to go about. Omi will come into play later. He's not just there to explain the story. So, ooh, so we have to get some lore behind him. So that'd be cool to see. Anyways, um, and then also this part, the thing about the Namekians on originating on some other world rather than Namek was another Toriyama's addition. So that's pretty cool to hear right there. So right here, yeah, who would have thought that the Namekians were not never actually a race born on planet Namek. Interesting. So, I mean, I definitely can't make that sort of huge decision that came from Toriyama. So, obviously, Tori Tara confirming that right there. So, thank God for that. Because I've been really worried if that was a Tori, uh, Tori Tara was like, hey, let's do this. And Toriyama was like, what? <laughs> not, not on my watch. I make those decisions. So, um, and also, um, Goku may have seemed perfected by the end of the moral arc, but he still has plenty of room to grow. Why? There's Whis, Beerus, Broly, so that's interesting, he still mentions Broly, and the Grand Priest. It's like there's somehow still room to grow. As he just said, there's plenty more for, for Goku. There's Whis, obviously probably the, the strongest beyond Beerus. Well, he is stronger than Beerus. Oh, and of course, Beerus, then Broly. So, it's kind of coincided that Beerus and Broly are close to the same level, but obviously Goku and Vegeta confused and take out Broly, but interesting to say that Broly is in the storyline, so maybe... I'm hoping we do get to see Broly sometime soon in this arc, or maybe in the new movie that is going to come out next year, but obviously we have to wait and see until that occurs. Also, there's some stuff about Vegeta that we're gonna, that we're gonna get into now. We decided that, that Vegeta's development would take a different route to Goku's. The sub leaves out different by mistake. Toyotaro squ squirrels out out of answering who's stronger now. It'll be too spoilerly. So we see right here, we decided that Vegeta's development would take a different route. True only Goku can, 
can use Ultra Instinct, and that felt like a little unfair, right? But now Vegeta has a exactly caught up, not exactly caught up, but <laughs> he's unlocked a new power, so now he's stronger. Hmm. So they're up up against each other, but we now know what it is. Um, obviously, we're gonna get an explanation of that in this much chapter, hopefully, and maybe not all the answers that we're gonna get for that, but we'll see. Also, backing up a bit, another wrinkle on the writing process is Toriyama's idea to include Zuno, but Toriyama's idea is to mine this for comic relief, all the wacky world mild sexual harassment. Of course, it wouldn't be Dragon Ball without it. It felt pretty impossible to loosen things up with Granola, right? But when Toriyama spoke to me about Zuno's part, oops. I thought I could add some levity until then I'd been trying to maintain the tension. So obviously some comic reliefs to like relieve the tension and stuff. So in this part, while the idea for the heaters came from Toriyama, it was Toyotaro who did their character designs. Apparently it was an arduous Arudis. Ar Arudis? I think Arudis process. <laughs> so you can see right there, um all these were um done by um Toy Taro, but obviously Toriyama came out with the idea as well. But the heaters were characters added by Toriyama while he was touching up the proposal, right? Obviously, yes. Um, the heaters designs were rejected three or four times. I basically gave it up when I made these ones. So basically, he wanted to give Toriyama the reins, but um, I guess um, Toriyama was like, alright, I'll do this. After the server reje rejection, I felt like making Toriyama to do it. It would have been really cool to see Toriyama's um, play on the heaters, but I'm pretty sure he had an idea what they were, but. I'm glad that we got these, but obviously more Toriyama original designs would be really cool to see. So yes, Toriyama designed all the important and complicated looking characters this arc, while Toriyama handled Elri Namiki in number 285, which is Monaito, and Round Cute Aliens number 8,673, which is of course the Sugar Gans. Next week, they learn we learn how to draw Granola properly, so so probably no future story of Revelation. So I actually missed the first part here of... Um, Oh, the very first tweet that talked about everything. So, about Toriyama's ideas right there, and the Mickens. The deal from Gorilla came from direct, directly from Toriyama's Haru. He proposed that various character ideas from all that, including that character with ties to Sailor would be awesome. And that's where Gorilla came in. So, that was it on that. Well, yeah, pretty interesting that, um, we actually found out from like volume 16 already from like the little, um, extra pages they give us that the Sugar Hands and when I took were designed by Toriyama himself, so that was cool to see. And a little and Granola's design, it actually did really did look like a Dragon Quest type design, so it's interesting that um I'm pretty sure that um Toyotaro was like looking at Dragon Quest when he was in drawing um Granola. There's no doubt about that. You can obviously tell right there, but really cool to see. But overall, yeah, pretty fun interview. No chapter panel preview for this month, but I think this is good enough. But we should be getting the previews for this month's chapter, which are the rough drafts. We should probably get like eight or seven pages this month. That's usually been the trend lately. But I've been getting ten as we did when the originally came out, but now we're getting like less and less pages just to like get the tension out there and get us all hyped for this month's chapter. So overall, pretty hyped for that. So anyways guys, tell me down below in the comments, what was your favorite part of the interview that was conducted by Toriyo Taru? Well, done by Victor Uchiha and answered by Tori Taru. What was your very tidbit that you found out about this interview? Anyways guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell when I upload new videos like this, talking about of course, Dragon Ball in general. This is the Saiyan Survive, sign out, I'll see you guys later, catch you in the next video. Bye.